Welcome into Phoenix College National Junior College Basketball, the Region 1 Division 2 Championship here in Arizona. Phoenix College hosting again 13th straight season for the Bears. They'll be taking on Pima Community College. Thanks for joining us here on MCTV Sports. Alongside the coach, Will Warasilla, I'm Mike Caratanudo. And coach, what a matchup we have tonight. Yes, I did say 13 straight years for Phoenix College. Coach Gordon gets mad when I say this, but the Division II championship is known as the Phoenix College Invitational. But they have a very worthy opponent tonight. Pima Community College Aztecs, led by Coach Peabody. They're going to have their hands full, though, because you look at this matchup, Will, and Phoenix College, again, very deep, can score from all over the court, basically, but they are led by their point guard, Jordan Matthews, who has definitely been a big reason for their success this year. Absolutely. The thing I love about this team that Matt has is that they have seven guys that are right between seven points a game and 15 points a game. So ball distribution, shot distribution, really one of the strengths of their team. But the thing I like the best about it, they shoot the threes. 40% as a team, that's ninth in the country. They were actually leading the nation in three-point percentage for most of the season. But this is going to be a fun game because both these teams love to shoot the threes. So this is a game, if you like scoring, you're going to love sitting and watching this one. And for Jordan Matthews, I mean, he, do, he does have a supporting cast. Who are some of the other players, either in the starting lineup or off the bench, you expect big games from from the Bears? Well, I'll tell you what, I think one of the keys tonight, especially on the offensive end, is going to be Riley Goulet. Because the way that Pima defends this, Goulet is going to get open shots. They are going to try to contain Matthews, make him be a distributor. So they're going to gap help off. And I think Goulet is going to be that kid that gets a lot of shots tonight. If he's knocking them down, Phoenix is going to have a good night. Another kid, Quentin Johnson, because he's going to have to guard Dion for Pima on the other side of it. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch. Yeah, well, we'll allude to it there. We look at Pima now. Deion James, the player of the year in the ACCAC, over 20 points a game. Six foot eight, that long athletic wing, Will, that I know you coaches love. But he's got a supporting cast too. But if he needs to deliver, he can deliver. They beat Glendale in the semifinals, 119 to 111. And that was in regulation, no overtime. So it's a team that can put up points, but led by Deion James. Absolutely. I mean, a kid that averages 20 a game, 10 rebounds a game, as you mentioned, player of the year in the conference really can do it all. But again, he needs somebody else to go with him. And I think it's going to be Emilio Aceto. I love this kid, a 17-point-a-game scorer. But the thing for Pima, they need to get contributions from their bench because they have five guys that average in double figures. If the bench doesn't come through tonight, you know Coach Gordon's going to be rolling his guys through. And again, when you have seven guys that shoot over 35% from the three-point line, he can just roll them in one after another. So it's going to be fun to see how Pima reacts to that. Yeah, it's been seven years since Pima's been in the Division II championship game where they, of course, fell to Phoenix College. But the last time these two met, Coach, it was in 2014, and Phoenix won that semifinal game. 108 to 104 in overtime. So from everything you just said about the shooters, either we're going to see a game, do you think we'll see a game like that or will it be they go cold and we see a really close tight game? Well, and it's always hard in championship games, you know, because players get a little bit tighter, that pressure of knowing this is the game that gets them to Danville in the national championship. So I think it's going to be a wide open game, truthfully, but look for the teams that get out in transition and get easy buckets to get off the snide. That's the one because we know it's not going to be a half court game, but the team that can get it in transition and how that starts is defensively and creating turnovers. So look for Phoenix to extend pressure up a lot. And when it does go into a half court, that matchup zone that they play is awful tough to beat. And we'll see if Phoenix can get off to a faster start because, as we both know, they've been a little bit of a slow starting, starting team all season long in the first half, but they have blown up in second halves. Well, that's going to do it for Will and I here in the pregame. When we get back, we'll have the starting lineup and tip from this Region 1 Division 2 championship game here from Phoenix College. We offered one of the first automotive technology degrees in the Southwest. To date, we've seen thousands of graduates enter their dream field, the automotive industry. Yeah, I guess you can call us dream builders. Let us help you build yours. Because as you can see, we've got more dreamers on the way. Way to go, Mia. We 
are coming to you here from Phoenix College. Back here, I should say, at Phoenix College for the Men's Region 1 Division 2 Championship game. He's Will Warasilla, Michael Carrots, you know, what a game. Like I said, we are going to have tonight 13th year of coaching at Phoenix College for Matt Gordon. 13th year in Division 2 Championship game. All kidding aside, Will, I know I called it the Phoenix College Invitational, but that being said, if different teams every two years basically almost every year but every two years different teams and yet he's still able to get it done get the talent in here may have not had the biggest players best players but overall as a unit it always seems to work out for him yeah it's amazing i'll tell you what having coached against him and then got it to know him on a personal level let me tell you this the reason he has so much success is because he put in place a set of principles and he does not waver you know tonight Matthews, their best player, is not going to start. And I don't want to speculate to why. I'm uh, sure he has his reasons, but it just goes to show in the biggest game of the year for them, it is principle. It is doing things exactly the way he wants. And, hey, he's the best coach in the conference three years running now. He's got the best program in the conference. So this is going to be a very, very interesting game to see how Pima comes in here and how this game goes. Yeah, again, we talked about all-conference players, obviously, for Pima. Dion James, pardon me, uh, gets the honor there for the player of the year. And when you look at it, again, I mean, the year he had 20 points, 10 rebounds, you talked about it in the pregame. And you look at it, and it's one of those things where for Coach Peabody, again, had some talent, and he's had a little bit of a mash unit this year. But yeah, co-player of the year, Deion James, pardon me, had, a, had talent, and now you look at it, and and he's gonna have to lead this team. And let's get to the starting lineups real quick yep. for Pima. Uh, Damon DeBots is number 12, a 6'9 sophomore, or a 6'8 sophomore. We talked about Deion James. Alizé Travis is a 6'1 freshman, number 21. Jacob Anastasi, number 23, is a 6'4 sophomore. And Emilio Aceto, number 45 a 6'4 sophomore for the Bears. Number two, LaVette Parker, a 6'2 freshman guard. Number four is Rashid Goolsby, a 6'4 freshman. Number 11 is Reese Plummer, a 6'5 freshman. Number 21, Riley Goulet, a 6'4 sophomore. And Avanti Nelms, a 6'5 sophomore out of Arcadia High School. Will start Phoenix College in their, well, you could say home grace with the blue and gold trim. Pima in their all navy blues with the white trim. And it's turned over right away. Yep. So now Phoenix College with the ball. And again, that is the Goulet that had the ball. And yeah, gonna he's going to be a factor in this game right here. As we said in the pregame, he's going to get looks. He's got to knock them down. Well, knocking down the. And that was number 24, Avante Nelms. Yeah, he's another one that tonight, he's going to get his looks as well. So going to be interesting to see how this game develops. Oh, and that shot from Anastasi gets blocked. Pima gets the rebound, puts it up, rolls off the rim, no good. And look at that, Anastasi gets the rebound. But, well, they're going to say he traveled before yep. he was fouled. Now, correct call by the officials right there. Championship game like this, incidental contact. you got to let that one go. Correct call. Uh, Nelms now will bring the ball up the court for the Bears as he's getting pressured a little. How you doing there from Alizé Travis, the 6'1 freshman. Yeah, this is going to be something to keep your eye on for Pima tonight because, again, they've got five outstanding players, but if this turns into a bench game, either because of guys getting tired or, more importantly, foul trouble, that's really going to put them at a disadvantage. Oh, oh, and another three by Nelms. He's giving it to the crowd, and Coach Peabody takes a timeout. Avante Nelms, six, and Pima, nothing. And I saw him play at Arcadia. Well, this kid, very, very saw me. You see it there, but second year in Matt Gordon's system, and he wants those free-flowing shooters, and that's exactly well, what he was at Arcadia, and it carried over here. Absolutely, and I think that's a great timeout by Coach Peabody right there because you can tell early on that he's gapping off of Nelms. And Nelms comes out, hits the first two threes he sees. Now look for him to change up his gap defense right here. 
And defensively, you talked about, I mean, what Phoenix College getting some turnovers early on. It's not really, they're playing man, but you were really impressed with what you saw twice, even though I know the Eastern game was tough, but seeing the playoff game against Chandler Gilbert the other day about their, their kind of their matchup defense. How does that work for Coach Ford? Yeah, so they really do a good job of taking away angles. Watch the guards up front here are going to switch everything, but the thing to keep your eye on is any baseline runners for Pima. That's how I want to see how Phoenix defends that. Well, Deion James, the wild shot there. Another three. Look at that. The home court bounce. And LaVette Parker makes it nine to nothing. And Coach Peabody just took a timeout. Now he takes a 30 second timeout. Absolute frustration there, Will, because another three point shot again. That's a home court roll there. Yeah, and the one thing, just looking down at Coach right there, he's starting to work the officials on screens. The one thing that Phoenix does a very, very good job of is not only setting screen, uh, screens, but also what are called slip screens, where the screener will pop to the ball, and sometimes it looks like he is moving on that, and I think that's what Coach Peabody was throwing up his hands looking at the baseline official, saying, hey, if you're going to let that go, this is going to be a long night. And again, I talked about, mentioned in the pregame, Phoenix College getting off to a slow start. They were only up by three on Chandler, or six by Chandler Gilbert at half, but again, came out with eight second half three pointers. And now you see the pressure defense there, barely getting the pass off. Now Pima open for the three point line. They're not bashful, 39% for the year from then. That is no good by Aceto. Get the rebound and we'll have a foul. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they have got to make sure, and I'm talking about Phoenix here, they have got to make sure to keep James off the boards because good possession right there. I always told my teams that if you're struggling early in a game, crash the offensive board, get those second chance points, see if you can't get an N1 or even put yourself at the line to get a couple. Well, Deion James gets them their first and second points as he switched that free throw as we saw right there, so nine to two, and I was gonna say, Important for Phoenix to get off to a fast start, but how big for Pima to, to at least hang around in the first half? Yeah, and this is going to be a game of runs. So even right now at 9-2, to two, I don't expect it to stay this way. There's going to be a lot of different runs in this game by both teams. Oh, nice floater on the try there by Rashad Goolsby. Wow, what a move, and floats it up with the right hand. Well, drew a little contact. Who thought he might get the call? But nonetheless, puts the Bears up 11-2. to two. Yep. Aztecs working the ball around, trying to get a good shot as Travis goes baseline, but he needs too much real estate as he steps out of bounds and another careless turnover early on by the Aztecs. Well, and that's the thing in this game too, because possessions are going to be so up and down, you can afford to have a couple of turnovers if they're attacking turnovers. So that one right there, I'm not, as a coach, I'm not really displeased about. Um, obviously, I'd like him to take care of the ball, but... Oh, wow. And as you're saying, take care of the ball, Goolsby, sp Goolsby spins to the hoop. The 360 layup. Now Pima trying to go to their big guy, James. Look at that post move, one dribble, and kisses it off the glass. His fourth point. Well, he has all four of his team's points. Yeah. They trail 13 to four. That's going to be a tough matchup for Palmer. And I heard Coach Gordon over here and his staff saying that helps got to get there quicker because you cannot guard James with just Palmer. He needs help. Yeah, that shot is up and no good. A long rebound to Travis. He's going to push it. And we know Coach Peabody, again, not playing out. Deion James, wow, a high arc and three pointer, no good. Asito with the rebound, puts it up off the glass and gets the hoop. And now they're, well, within seven, 13 to six. And another good possession there where you crash the offensive boards. If Phoenix has a weakness, I really think that's it. Besides their reliance on the three, they need to rebound the ball to be an effective team. Taking it to the hoop there was Plummer. He gets fouled, and he is fouled by Dubots. So his first team second. We're going to the line to shoot some uh, charity shots will be Reese Plummer. As he puts the first one up, the lefty. And why does it always look so much smoother when they <laughs> shoot? Well, I always loved recruiting lefties. They just, uh, like you said, they just always look nice doing things. Let's see if Phoenix extends pressure here on the made free throw. 
Oh, you jinxed him. The broadcaster <laughs> jinxed by Mr. <laughs> by the coach, former SEC head coach, Will Warasilla, joining us here on MCTV Sports. 16 minutes left to go here in the first half. I apologize to you, Mr. Palmer. <laughs> and the three by Aceto bangs around the rim and drops. Yeah, you got to make sure defensively if you're Coach Gordon, if you're going to match up up top with two guards, if they put three up there, you've got to have your low man at least get up and show on that. And here comes a turnover. Deion James pushing it, puts it up. Ooh, he's going to say a little hard with the right hand. And Goolsby, I think, might have a little bit of a case. Deion James is just out of control. Looks like he took Goolsby out, but the contact will send, will give Goolsby be his first foul, team second, and send James to the line. Well, I love the fact that he's attacking the rim. You know, as a coach, you love to see that even though numbers were not in his favor, you're the best player on the floor. Go and attack that rim. Did a good job getting to the foul line, getting rewarded for that. And now we have Quentin Johnson, number 22, checking in and on the bench. Coming in, um, that is... Matthews, sorry, that checked in for Phoenix College. Jonathan Matthews. Yeah, and let's see how he gets going. Having not started this game, sometimes as a coach, you always get a little bit concerned about that, whether he can respond off the bench as opposed to starting. Well, both free throws good again by James. Well, he's got six points, four from the line as the three is up and no good. Nice rebound there by Alunga, Alunga Moise. And the three is up by Moise, says that's no good. Rebound, and now here comes Matthews. And Matthews, a 5'8 sophomore out of Sierra Linda High School. And a very, very good penetrating guard. Pima has got to do a good job of containing him off of the dribble. If they need to gap help him, that's oh. just going to free up spots for the shooters. Oh, it's an offensive foul there. Wow, I, that was a big thud on the court. Yeah, and, and I think a... the correct call, too. He was outside the restricted area. Good call by the baseline official right there. So the foul, well, three for Phoenix College, two for Pima so far. 14.40 uh, left to go here in the first half. Now Pima again closed and said it'd be a game of runs. So now they're within three, 14-11. Trying to tie it up. The three is up. Ooh, Asado rolls around the rim. No good. Now here come the Bears the other way as Matthews. And he was a first team all ACC uh, region player as well for the Bears. Yeah, he's really the barometer for PC. As he goes, that team will go. So that's a travel. That's a good call by the official right there. Oh, Got to get his feet down. We're now checking in for Phoenix College number 20, Kavion Moore, a 6'2 sophomore, as he will replace Avanti Nelm, six points early on in this first half. So a good start for Nelms. Yeah, and break. again, I like Coach Gordon going to his bench often here. Get everybody a chance to break a sweat in this. If, if you're a coach that uses a lot of guys, always like to get them in early in a game like this so everybody has a sweat going. Baseline jumper no good by Isaiah Murphy who checked in and now Matthews, well, corrals the ball, looking to push it up. Ooh, the little, well, not so much the dunk, but the nice alley pass there to Quentin Johnson. And that makes it 16-11. Yeah, Great court vision right there by Matthews. Seeing both wings out there pick the best option, threw it up where only Johnson was going to get that. And Murphy, well, maybe mishandled it, but gets it down low to Moise, and he puts that up and in. So it makes it a three-point game, 16-13. Phoenix College leading early on as Goolsby with the ball, puts it up, no good. Rebound tipped around by Johnson. But Pima comes away with it. Now they're going to push. Oh, and look at Murphy. Nice big two steps there and one. As Isaiah Murphy gets to the hoop, puts it in, and he will go through the charity stripe to see if he can tie this up and get through the old-fashioned way. Yeah, good push that time. You know, Pima, other than the first three possessions of the game where they weren't very tight defensively, they have made some good adjustments, as we had discussed, really doing a nice job on that end of the floor now. Levante Nelms checks back in as Goolsby picked up his second foul. 
And that is the fourth team foul on Phoenix College. So Murphy hits one of two. Or no, sorry, it was a three. So he hits the free throw, pardon me. And now we are all tied up at 16. Yeah, right now everything is away from the basket for Phoenix. They really have to get into a flow here. Oh, and that shot no good there by KV on Moore who had checked in and now pushing the ball up the other way. Jacob Anastasi. That high low is gonna be there all night for Pima if they want it. Shot up by Travis, no good, but Moise comes down with the rebound, drops it back off to Murphy, misses the three, rolls around, and this time the Bears get the rebound, and Matthews will push it up right away. On the lane, look at Matthews, and one for his first basket. Great penetration right there by him. And, and again, you know, Pima is going to have to understand that in this game, when he has the ball, you have got to gap him. If you're guarding him, your job is purely to play him straight up, square up, and just try to keep him in front. Easier said than done. As he gets three the old-fashioned way. Here comes a little half-court trap from Phoenix right here. Got to attack the middle and look opposite on this if you're Pima. They go to the middle there. Ooh, a little contact. Get down low, and it's Block Nelms. Looks at the official as he was able to stuff, but a little too much contact there as he ran into Damon DeBots, and that is Nelms' first and the team's fifth. Yeah, great job by Pima there. Just draw the top two guys together on that, that high court trap like that. Get it middle. I like the read and way to attack the rim by them. Now they just got to convert at the line. So he misses the first free throw. And again, you know me, I'm a big fan of scoring points without the clock running. <laughs> and he misses both, and a nice rebound there by Quentin Johnson as he snags it out of the air, gets it right up to Matthews, pushing it up the court. And as he drops it off, two more, and they're going to work that ball around. Nelms with a nice jump stop. Matthews with some pressure, rolls it off the front of the rim. Oh, and trying to, well, out of control almost. Gave me on more, had the rebound, had a chance that I couldn't control it down low. And that time, Dubots able to finish after he had missed both free throws. And that's one of the weaknesses of that matchup right there is that if you do not contain the baseline, the top guy that's in that pinch post area can just slide down the lane. And right there, PC had no one to guard him. And well, Kavion Moore with the up and under. And he puts it in as the foul is on Dubots. That's his second. Well, this game so far has been everything is advertised. 21-18, 11-22 to go here in the first half. So we're on a nice 45, 50 point pace for both teams. Right here, it's gonna be interesting to see because Pima missed free throws. I hope that this game does not come down to that. I really want to see these two teams take care of it without having it be determined at the foul line. But right now, both coaches not very happy with the officiating. KVM Moore gets the N1 and answering down at the other end of the court. You saw it there, Deion James with the tray. Yeah, good ball movement by Pima right there. And again, just finding the open gap. Both these teams love to shoot that three. Both teams have got to do a better job defending that line right now. Just inside the three-point line, a little bit of a line drive shot there from Gavion Moore. But nonetheless, the line drive shot falls. Phoenix College back up by three, 24-21. James tries to whip the ball down low to Moise, but it goes out. Moise will check out, checking in for him. That's number 21 back in the game, Alizé Travis, the 6'1 freshman for Pima. Yeah, not the best of reads there by James, but... That's one of those, again, it's at least an attacking turnover, but a player like that, just pull up, shoot your jump shot. You had the defender on your hip. I would have liked to have seen him shoot that right there instead of trying to pass that one. And we get foul there. And 
So that's on number four, it's on Murphy. Yeah, right now you see Coach Peabody working the official here. Hey, he's got a gripe. You know, right there the defender is vertical. He's entitled to that spot just because there's contact. If the offensive player initiates it, if the defender is vertical, he's got a right to that space. I think Coach has got a legitimate argument right here. So Moore hits the first free throw. And in rhythm there. Well, he stays perfect from the line. Three for three for Moore. Hey, he's off to a very good start off the bench for Coach Gordon and the Bears. Phoenix College up by five, 26 21. Aztecs again in the navy blue with the uh, great silver trim, silver numbers. And the jump shot is up and way off the mark there by Murphy. Matthews gets the ball, charges it right back down court, gets in the lane, puts it off the glass, no good. Ball's knocked around, little hot potato there. And now here come the Aztecs going the other way as Anastasi well, goes all the way to the basket but misses the two-foot layup. A little bit too hard off the glass. But here come the Bears in this track meet going the other way. And Coach Peabody can't believe this call as that foul is on Travis. That's his second and the 16th foul. Checking back in for Phoenix number 11, Reese Plummer, and he'll replace Quentin Johnson. This is one of those where I'm glad I'm sitting over here because if I'm sitting on that Pima bench right now, I am very displeased with the officiating. Oh, and a nice behind the back pass there from Moore to Plummer who just checked back in. And nobody guarding Moore and he gets the layup. And yeah, I gotta agree with you on that, Will, is James with a nice spin pass down low and putting it in there was Murphy. Yeah, I gotta agree with you. Coach Peabody jumped up right away. And again, if it's a foul, it's a foul, but you don't, a little ticky-tack like that's got to be frustrating for coach and player. Absolutely. Matthews with the ball now, gets cut off. Nelms thought about the three, nice ball fake. Oh, gets knocked away. Matthews and seven seconds on the shot clock. Matthews takes a three, goes down. No call there as Coach Gordon getting a little animated trying to get them into the offense. And now Asado, and look at that, he buries the three. That's his second one of this first half. Yeah, good ball movement again by Pima right there. And, and I think Coach Gordon, you know, right now PC again is kind of in a little bit of a funk. I really need to see a couple of possessions where they reverse the ball a few times. Well, 28-26 was the score until Reese Plummer hits the uh, shot, and that foul will be on Dion James, so he'll have a chance to extend the lead to five as Matthews now comes out. There. This is now my fourth time watching Phoenix play this year, and I've got to tell you, Palmer might be the most underrated player on this team. Just does a fantastic job every game that I've watched this kid play. Boy, so both coaches just giving it to this officiating crew right now. <laughs> a lot of frustration by the coaches here on both sides. Yeah, Reese Plummer gets the free throw. Six foot five freshman out of uh, Deer Valley High School here in Glendale. And the foul there is on Goulet. That's his first, team six. And Murphy puts it the free throw up and in. Well, Matthews had a real quick break, and I think that was Coach Gordon talking to him after he was yelling for that ball reversal a couple of possessions ago, and Matthew took that top of the key three. I think Coach just had to settle him down a little bit and make sure they make that extra pass and swing the ball the other side of the floor. Well, Murphy hits both free throws. Again, 30 to 28, 825 left to go here in the first half. Thanks for joining us here on MCTV Sports as Nelms with the ball now for Phoenix College. Gets it down low. Ooh, the pump fake. And yeah, getting fouled pretty hard there by Deion James, and that's his second. That's a big foul right there because with 8.17 to go, and you can see right now they're making a concerted effort to get Palmer the ball on that block and let him go at James. As he sinks the first free throw. 
And I apologize for pronouncing his last name wrong. It's Plummer, not Palmer. Well, nonetheless, he stays uh, perfect from the free throw. Or no, he's four for five. Yeah, I jinxed him on the other one. Jinxed so. him, yeah. <laughs> Good time out here by Coach Gordon, by the way. He hasn't had one yet. Watch for him to make an adjustment right here defensively. Yeah, Coach Gordon takes a timeout. We'll take it here with him at 32-28. Phoenix leading here in the first half of the Division II Championship here on MCTV Sports. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy. And busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. All right, back here at Phoenix College. 32-28 to score. Pima again in the navy blue uniforms. The, uh, what do I say? White trim, white numbers. Taking on Phoenix in their all grays with the uh, blue and gold trim. Nine seconds on the shot clock out of the timeout. Oh, a nice bounce pass there down low. And look at that, Deion James. Well, that's that high-low pinch post action I was talking about earlier. If you allow that baseline penetration, that weak side defender has got to slide over and defend that cut. That's twice now Pima's beat him on it. Shot's no good there. Nice rebound by Anastasi, and he'll push it up right away as he gets it over to Travis. The corner shot by Murphy, no good, but the rebound down low to Anastasi, or I'm sorry, to Asado, who gets fouled by Nelms, and that's Nelms' second. And again, offensive rebounds right here. When you play that matchup defense, you've got to understand that when a shot goes up, you have got to get a body on the closest guy to you. And right now, Phoenix is a little bit late in their rotations, and it's cost them on a few separate occasions. So Davis Wade checks in for Nelms. He only said one, but I have that as Nelms' second foul, so I'll have to check that at the half. And the free throw no good by Aceto, so he only gets one of two. Another offensive rebound for the Aztecs there. And another foul. So Lavette Parker picks up his first. And now that's the 18th foul. And Isaiah Murphy's made a living at the free throw line so far in this uh, first half. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's quietly been a guy that we didn't really talk about in the open, but has really come on and played well here in the first half. Well, he misses the front end of the one and one there, and now the three by Parker, and look at that, Lavette Parker, his second tray, and puts Phoenix back up by four, 35-31. Now Deion James, well, didn't call bank, a long three there. Nice rebound by Davis Wade, the 6'1 sophomore. Gets it over to Matthews. He'll get it back to Wade, and look at that three, and look at that, Dustin off the strings with the swish. Jonathan Matthews. That is where Phoenix is just absolutely at their best. Attacking off of transition, one simple cut in and out, and wide open in rhythm three. 38-31, they're up by seven. And now they're gonna call a little too much contact down low. Looks like that's gonna be on Plummer. Boy, that's a tough call. You've got both guys going hard to that spot. Yeah, that, that's a tough break for Plummer right there. Yeah, that's his second foul. Checking back in for him will be Quentin Johnson, who has one. And Dion James will go to the free throw line as he puts the first one up, rattles it home. <laughs> and you see Coach Gordon right here trying to plead his case on that. But again, that matchup really is dependent on how you defend cutters. And if they're going to make that call, Again, that's going to put PC in a rough spot defensively. Deion James hits two, gets his team back within five, and look at that. Matthews takes it right down, misses the layup, and now here comes oh, Deion James as he bounces it off his shoe, maybe off his shin. Either way, Will goes out of bounds there, and with 6.22 left to go in the first half, the Bears with the ball and a five-point lead. Yeah, don't like that one right there. He didn't have any numbers. That's one you got to pull out. You've had some success 
initiating with that pinch post action. Would have liked to have seen him get it to his guard and see if they had a better possession that started that way. 13 on the shot clock. Nelms checked back into the game. Nice pass. Nelms just inside the three-point line. Rolls off the rim. No good. James with the rebound as he gets it to Alizé Travis. Guard gets it to change. He will take that three, and he buries it. I thought that was long. But Deion James with the tray, his second one of the half. Yeah, PC's got to make sure those top two guys on their defense have got to do a better job in transition of guarding that first swing pass. Well, three goes up there, no good. James gets the rebound, gets it right over to Travis. He'll push it up again. As Anastasi, they thought may have traveled, and now they're going to call. It's an offensive foul on Jacob Anastasi. That'll be his first. Great job by Nelms. Again, for people that are watching at home, the blue arc, that is in the key area there. That's called the restricted area. And the reason that that's there is as a defender, you have to have both feet established outside of that arc on a block charge type of play. Nelms did a great job right now getting his feet outside of there, establishing position, taking the charge. Great defensive play by him. Well, checking back in the game is Rashid Goolsby. He has two fouls, but Coach Gordon trusting him with 5.15 left to go here in the first half. Oh, trying to go down low. Knocked away nicely there by Damon DeBots. I haven't said much about the 6'9 uh, sophomore, but he's played pretty well down low. Yeah, so far this has been a very, very well-played game on the block by both teams. Parker with the ball gets it to Matthews. Ooh, and that Parker thought about the three. Doesn't take it in that time. Well, LeVette Parker hits the two deep in the corner. That's his first shot from inside the arc as they're back up by four, 40 to 36. Yeah, great step back by him to get space and separation. You can just see in his body motion right now that he's really feeling it. And what a pass there from Asado to Isaiah Murphy puts it in. And off the bench, Isaiah Murphy, very solid for this Pima team. We talked about it, Will, but he's asserted himself in this game, as has Quentin Johnson with his fourth point of the half. Puts Phoenix back up by four. But, well, you said we see a track meet. You were right. You had the crystal ball on that one, Coach. Yeah, I'll tell you what. The very, very good flow and pace to this game, except for a few very questionable calls, this has been a very, very well-played first half by both teams. Well, now LeVette Parker picks up his second foul on the trip there. So 42-38, you see there, is going to the free throw line. That will be Anastasi looking for his first points of the game, 6-4. As he puts it up and in, the 6-4 sophomore, pardon me, puts the first free throw up and in. Well, Parker coming out of the game, as you see right there. A little disappointed. He seemed like he was really starting to get in the flow. I would have liked to have seen him stretch out for maybe another minute, minute and a half. Well, coach doesn't want him to pick up maybe that foul as tight as they've been calling some of it. So, yep. But I'm with you on that. He was just starting to get, seemingly right, into that rhythm. Both free throws good by Anastasi. His first two points and a block by Murphy as he sends the ball down to the court. And he also, well, the momentum of Goolsby took him into Murphy and down to the court, but now here comes Pima. Oh, and a wide open three from the top of the key, and it's good. Alizé Travis with his first bucket of the half, and his team with a one-point lead, 43-42 to 42 for Pima. Yeah, nice little run that Pima's on right here. Important for Phoenix to get a good possession and a good look right here. Nice jump stop in the lane there by KV on Moore. Gets it back out to Matthews. Now dumping it over to Johnson. He goes baseline. Oh, and it almost, almost gets stolen. Johnson gets it back, draws the con. Oh, no, a shot clock violation. May have been a foul, but the clock already went to zero. And a 30 second shot clock violation yep. as Coach Mack Gordon takes a full timeout and we'll do that with him the first time. Phoenix has trail. 3.23 left to go in the first half of this Division II championship game. More coming up here on MCTV Sports. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, are 
you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go ahead and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Alongside Will Warasilla, Michael Caraccio here at Phoenix College. Pima leading 43-42 for the first time in this half, Will. Yeah, I'll tell you what, really nice run. And we knew there was going to be a bunch of them in this game. But really nice job by Pima, cleaning up their defense, getting good possessions, really exposing that matchup weakness that Phoenix has at that pinch post. Wow, and right out of the timeout, Alice A. Travis knifes to the hoop and gets the bucket. So 45-42 now, Pima with a three-point lead. We'll see what kind of adjustments Coach Gordon gave his team as they're trying to work the block now. Nice job by Quentin Johnson. Puts it up, and look at that spin move. Puts it in for his sixth point. I think Phoenix could go down there a lot more with him and with Plummer. They've got a nice advantage. Both of those guys do a very nice job on the block scoring the basketball. So Pima moving the ball around now. They're still up by one. And a three by Asado, and look at that. Matthews in his face, playing nice straight up defense, but Emilio buries his third tray of the first half. So now Phoenix College with 2.20 left. They're trying to work the ball around as that's number five, Davis Wade, back in the game. So we got Wade, Matthews, Moore, Johnson, and Goolsby on the court. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. They get it to Goolsby at the free throw line. A three-pointer by Johnson. Rolls around. No good. And the rebound comes down to Jacob Anastasi as he gets it over to Travis. Almost a little too careful by Phoenix on that possession right there. They passed up a couple of attacking opportunities. Ended up getting a contested shot. Well, that three's contested, but Asado hits it again. Back-to-back -back trays. And they are up 51 to 44 with 1 to 30 left to go in the first half. Matthews goes baseline, gets it out to Wade. Now Wade will take a three. Oh, off the back rim, no good. But a nice run down there by KV on Moore. Gets it down low to Johnson, no good. And fighting for the rebound on the court. And wow, how do you call a foul? Wow. There? Yeah, I'm with you on that. And they're going to call it on <laughs> Anastasi, his second, and that's the team's tenth. And now we have substitutions coming back in. Lavette Parker coming back in. Oh, wait. It's two shots, so they can't come in until. Yeah. I, can't come in until after the first free throw. When Parker came out of this game, I believe it was a one or a two point game at that point, and now Phoenix finds themselves down seven. Uh, gonna be interesting to see what they can do here with a minute 12, because you figure this is a two for one type of scenario for Pima, where they can come down and basically wind the clock down to about 15, 10 seconds on the shot clock before they attack, knowing that then that limits Phoenix to a possession where they can get two. So with this seven-point lead, still wow, miss both yep, free going to be interesting to see Johnson. what Pima does with this. Quentin Johnson missing both there as we get number as Riley Goulet checks back in along with Lavette Parker and Avanti Nelms also back in the game for Phoenix College. And well, here comes your uh, Reese Plummer. Here comes your boy, Quentin Johnson, with 51-44, 59 seconds left. Yeah, I'm surprised that they went that fast right here. This is where you got to have a little bit of clock management in these type of games because, again, a quick possession there where they didn't get anything. Look for Plummer on the block right here. Matthews with the ball, knifing down to the block, gets it back to Nelms. Again, a lot of commotion up top, and now it goes back to Matthews. Tries to go down the lane, and they're going to call the contact there on Alunga Moise.
Well, I know that Phoenix likes to extend pressure up on made free throws. The problem is they've left some at the line so far in the first half. Let's see if Matthews can knock these both down and extend some pressure up here. Well, he must have heard you there, Coach, as he knocks down the first one. He gets the ball back, and now he puts it up, and the second one is good as well. So that gets him back to within five with 40 seconds left to go. Now is a Travis with the ball, so he'll move it around. Now he gets it back up top. He's trying to work the shot clock. Goes baseline, now swings it out. The three-pointer by Anastasi rolls around, no good. And the rebound there by Riley Goulet. And now Phoenix can hold for the last shot. But again, there's that baseline penetration that Coach Gordon and his staff are really going to have to look at hard at halftime because they're getting beat on that. That's a tough rotation. So seven seconds left. Matthews with the ball, goes to his right, gets a screen, gets it in the corner. Parker puts up the three, and he buries it. LaVette Parker, his third tray as the last shot gets hucked from three-quarters court by Pima and is no good. And that makes it a two-point game, 51 to 49 as Phoenix College is trailing. Well, you saw the free throws there, he gets it, and then LaVette Parker Kept, kind of kept that uh, kept that momentum going that he built up. Hits his third three of the half right, right before the buzzer. Yeah, that that's a big shot right there for them because now, you know, this game is going exactly like we thought it would. You've got the score right about the pace of play where we thought it was going to be. So really looking forward to an exciting second half. Yeah, it should be a very exciting second half. 51-49 is the score here at halftime. We get back, we'll have the second half in this men's Region 1 Division 2 championship game here on MCTV Sports. Arizona, ramp up your career in technology industries with a degree or certificate through Maricopa Community Colleges. Industrial maintenance, automation, machining, and welding careers are in high demand and pay well. Go to rampupaz.com to find out how to get the career and paycheck you've always wanted. Start making up to $40,000 or more in as little as nine months. Be in demand. Enroll now. Classes start soon at Maricopa Community Colleges. Visit rampupaz.com to learn more. 51-49, Pima leading the Region 1 Division 2 championship game here at Phoenix College. 13 years in a row for Phoenix College in this game alongside Will Warsaw and Michael Carrington as we get set to start the second half. And uh, well, Coach Gordon going with his initial starting lineup. LeVette Parker, Rashad Goolsby, Reese Plummer, Riley Goulet, and Avante Nelms. And the same for Pima, we have Damon DeBox, Dion James, Alice Travis, Jacob Anastasi, and Emilio Aceto. Yeah, right off the bat, right to Plummer. Love that. He's going to be the key to this second half right here. If he can continue to get that low and be able to get touches down there. Ball tied up at 51, and a foul there. Fouls on Plummer, and now that's his. Oh, his third, that second hits his Reese Plummer's third. Yeah, to finish up my thought on that, you know, if he continues to get touches down there, Pima's really going to have to try to make an adjustment. And what that's going to do is when Matthews comes back in this game, that's really going to open up some penetrating lanes for him. So keep your eye on that as this half progresses. Oh, second free throw by Anastasi, no good. Leading score at the half, Deion James, 16 points. <laughs> Phoenix Moore spread out. Emilio Aceto also had 15 on that late run, but Levette Parker for PC at 11, and Jonathan Matthews and Reese Plummer at eight. And the shot is up and in by who else? Mr. Plummer, and he draws the foul, has a chance at the end one. Yeah, great job there. and. I think the Pima staff is really going to have to look at what they do when shots go up because Plummer right now is just not really being challenged going to the offensive boards. 
does miss that free throw. So Phoenix College up by one. And Will, that's the third foul there on the point guard, Alizé Travis, who they have not had a lot of points, five points, but again, has run a very, very solid offense for the Aztecs. Has the shots up there, no good. LeVette Parker comes down with it, pushes the ball up the court, gets in the lane, bounces it over to Plummer, almost a little low. As you see, Plummer holds on to it. Oh, and down the lane goes Goolsby, gets the hoop and one. And that foul will be the third on Deion Jones. Yeah, Pima right now is going to be challenged because, again, they did not use their bench a whole lot in that first half. And they're going to have to have some guys step up and give them some good minutes right here. Well, and you speak of that, Isaiah Murphy, we talked a lot about him. Nine points in the first half, but played a very solid first half. Even on the defensive end, we talked about the need to challenge some shots. And Ose Murphy did a little bit more of that as the half went on. Yeah. And this is going to be interesting to see how Pima reacts to this because right now, PC, just like that first half, came out on a little bit of a run. Got to see if Pima settles in right here. So that makes it 56-52. The Bears have been known for their second half runs. Asado with a nice ball fake at the three-point line up and under. Nice reverse layup by Emilio Asado, his 17th point of the game. Yeah, we talked about him in the intro as well, that they needed somebody else to go with James. And boy, he has answered the bell for Pima for sure. Goolsby gets it out to Goulet for three, and he buries it. Riley Goulet, his first points of the game. Though. Yeah, he was another one we talked about that, you know, ended up having a real quiet first half. But you can see there, a lot of space there for him to get off that three, and he knocked it down. Well, the foul there on Plummer. That's his fourth. So now Reese Plummer going to have to come out after having four points early on. And again, it may be ticky tack roll, but I will say this, because I always say the official's job is a tough, one of the toughest to have being as subjective as it is. But when you look at it, they've called it the same way on both ends. So both coaches getting equally frustrated as the three-pointer goes up and in for who else? Asado, his fifth three of this game. Well, Coach Gordon said it before the game when we were talking to him that he was a guy that they could not leave open on that line. And boy, was uh, he 100% on the money. He has knocked everything down that he's had out there. Shot no good, but it bounces around. Phoenix gets the rebound. LeVette Parker back up top. And bounce it down low. Oh, and the turnaround shot. Quentin Johnson had checked in for Plummer. And Quentin Johnson gets his eighth point of the game as his team is up by four, 61-57. Glad you could join us here on MCTV Sports, the Region 1 Division II Championship. And look at that, the stop and pop inside the free throw line by Anastasi. And that gets Pima back to within two. Oh, Quentin Johnson had the right idea, just kissed it too hard off the glass. Deion James with it, gets it back to Travis. And Travis and James both playing with three fouls. Reese Plummer has four. And we have a lot of the second half left to go. 16.40 left to go. And we're going to get a blocking foul as Isaiah Murphy was attacking the hoop. And that'll be on Riley Goulet. And that's Goulet's second. I think they got that on Johnson, 22. Oh, I'm sorry, you're yep. right. Quentin Johnson. So that, well, either way, it's Quentin yeah. Johnson's second. So again, a uh, plethora of fouls tonight as the shot is up and good. The three-pointer by Alizé Travis. That's one thing I do not want to see this game come down to because, again, these are clearly the two best teams. And, you know, I don't want it decided by foul trouble or free throws late. I want these guys to have to decide it by making plays. Wow, well, there's another three-pointer made by Nelms. And that's his third one. As Coach Gordon jumps off the bench emphatically trying to get his defense set up. And going in the lane is Anastasi, gets the contact, no call. But Will, look at the concentration for him to get the reverse off the glass. And the three-pointer up and no good by Goulet. And it'll be Phoenix ball off the mishandled rebound. You know, if you look at Coach Gordon throughout the years, it looks like he's <laughs> never won any of these games. <laughs> and well, I, I say it in jest in a way, but I mean, you got to love the intensity as the three-pointer rolls in and out there. But the intensity and just, like you said in the earlier, the system, and it, and it works, and he gets the right kind of guys in here. 
Absolutely, and I know having coached against them, the intensity that we both brought to the game, and now that I'm out of it, the friendship that I've developed with him and getting to know him as a man, it, he is the same off the court as he is on it. And, you know, but it's just a testament, again, to the program he runs here. He's just a, he's one of the best coaches and would love to see him get a chance at that four-year level. He always tells me he's happy here, so. Well, I would be happy, too, with 13 straight championship so. games. It's better than sitting home and making tea times right now. <laughs> yep. So how many clipboards did you break against him? Uh, I've got a lot to my credit, <laughs> let me tell you. Now you're a very intense, fiery coach, and you just wanted things the right way. Quentin Johnson with the turnaround. Man, such a beautiful move, just has to finish. Yeah, he's got to take a better angle right there. He kind of put himself in a bad position, but it was also good defense to push him down into that. Now Deion James, ooh, he does the same thing, hard yep. off the glass. So five minutes gone by here in the second half, 64-63, Pima leading over Phoenix College. All bouncing around, and Parker, well, oh, Rusby gets it right to Parker. I don't know how Parker's able to, he threw a line drive from two feet away. <laughs> well, when you look right now, look at James. He is tired out there, number 15 for Pima. Shot is up. Oh, no good. Quentin Johnson gets a rebound, and that time with the Knights looked to, looked to find a three-point shooter, but then decided he was going to put it up and in. Yeah, there's something to keep your eye on right here with Pima. 65-64. Travis takes the three and it is online. Alizé Travis buries his second tray. And they are up by two now. 67-65. And Travis with the steal. Tips it away from Nels. Puts up a three from the same spot. No good. And Newsby and Lavette Parker play bumper cars, but Parker able to pick it up, get it to Nelms, wow. and try to go around to Johnson. Nice play there by Alizé Travis. Two steals in a row he's had on Nelms. Yeah, he's really, really getting after it on that side of the floor. And Isaiah Murphy gets the contact and his 11th point of the game. And again, it's the Pima team, the 119 to 111, they put up, they put up, they, well, put up 62 points in the second half against Glendale. They got outscored 63 to 62, Will, but 57 in the first half as we get a quick 30-second timeout here. 68-65, Pima leading now. They just won't go away. You talk about the three fouls um, on Dion James, also three on Travis, four for Plummer, and no one else from Phoenix College really has three, a few other with two. Yep. But man, that's tough because Reese again, he was just starting to seemingly get into the rhythm that you talked about, Coach LeVette Parker had in the first half when he had to go sit down. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, if I'm Coach Peabody right now, I'm a little bit concerned about James and how tired he looks because with three fouls and a tired player, that's usually a recipe to pick up your fourth. And if he picks up his fourth foul right now, that's going to put Pima in a very, very difficult yes. spot. So. Be curious to see if they try to hide him or do some different things defensively, at least for the next couple of minutes to try to buy some time off of that clock. Yeah, Pima, Phoenix coming in again, 25 and six overall. Pima 20 and 11 is Quentin Johnson. Well, that is his sweet spot. He loves that shot and out of the timeout, gets his team the point, but there's the hoop, but they're still down by one, 68, 67. As Travis goes down the lane, gets blocked, but Phoenix College knocks it out of bounds. 18 seconds still left on the shot clock. But yeah, Pima coming in 20 and 11. We saw the records earlier, but and 13 and 9 in conference, 17 and 5 for Mac Gordon. Um, one and two in Division Two, so no surprise they're both here, but again, yeah. over, over. clearly the two best teams in Division Two. I mean, there's no debate about that. And we're being treated to a fantastic championship game here. Five on the shot clock as James goes down the lane, a little too hard off the glass. Goolsby. Picks it up off the glass, stops about half court, gives it over to Nelms, and he'll send it over to Jonathan Matthews, who, again, not starting, but checked it, played a lot in the first half. Now he's in the game. Ball goes over to Nelms, down low, there's Johnson, and wow. It's the fourth foul, but 
Yep. They look like too much contact there to me. You wouldn't call that on the playground, I know that. Yeah, but you could see that one coming too. And a great job by Coach Gordon recognizing that. That was a designed entry the whole way to run Goulet off of that slide screen, swing the ball. You've got a backside seal there with Johnson, and you do. You pick up that fourth foul. Now let's see what type of run Phoenix goes on here. As Damon Dubotz checks in, no shot. Coach Gordon trying to get the continuation. And the foul is on, I will say Travis. Now that's Travis's fourth foul. 12.36 left to go. Travis has four, Deion James has four from Pima. And like I said, Reese Plummer from Phoenix, as you see Coach Gordon there, has four from PC. Well, this is where those early fouls, those ticky-tack ones early in the game, really come back to have an influence on this, and that's a shame. Down low, ooh, Johnson, no good. Look at that, Travis fighting for the board, and Elms ties him up, and it'll be PC ball on the possession arrow. Well, and if I'm Phoenix right now, I call a play design for Goolsby. He has not had a chance to get anything going to the rim right here. I would have liked to have seen him get a look. And Elms took a wide open three, no good, and Isaiah Murphy gets the rebound. Yeah, he got to the knife of the lane a few times in that first half, and Sato goes baseline, they're gonna say, on the ground and that the foul there will be on Goosby and that's his third. Yep. Right here with the game that Murphy has had so far, he is gonna have to step up big with Asado right here. Those two are gonna have to carry the load for the next at least five to six minutes depending on how this game goes. If it starts to creep away from Pima, you might see James have to come back into this game a little bit earlier just to make sure that they can keep it close. You see Rashad Goolsby limping as he comes off the court. Three-pointer by Aceto up and no good. Rebound by KB on Moore, who had checked in, along with number two, LeVette Parker, back in the game. Oh, Johnson misses the layup and the follow-up there. Now here comes Alizé Travis. And oh, look at that. Isaiah Murphy misses the first time, gets his own rebound, and puts it shot up and in. So now it is 70-67. And this was about the time in the first half when Pima went on that run. So let's see if they can duplicate oh. it again right here. Nelms fell down, and as he fell down, he made contact with Jacob Anastasi. So, so now Nelms picks up his second foul. Let's see if Pima tries to run some stagger screens right here for Sato on that baseline. Watch 45 coming off a series of screens right here. Let's see if they can't pop him open for a three. Well, going to the lane there Charge. is Murphy, and he's gonna, well, right there, get called with the offensive foul, and that'll be his second. Yeah, I kind of like the design of that play. It almost looked like that dribble penetration to the baseline, that could have been a pitch out three, just not a very good read by the Pima player right there. That's an easy call for the official to make. Well, tough from angle, we'll see if he was set. He was outside the, the arc, like you're saying, so yeah. definitely, again, but he's not, Sam Murphy, and that's, well, his second foul, as we see Brian Peabody there in, in his fifth season, his second stint with the uh, Aztecs. Yeah, and a fantastic coach. You know, we've talked a lot about Coach Gordon in this, but I also had the pleasure of coaching against Coach Peabody when I was at Scottsdale, and let me tell you something, uh, just does a fantastic job, especially with the way that they play the game. And Johnson misses the layup, gets his rebound. Oh, and on the follow, it doesn't go, but he gets fouled. And that'll be on Aloya Moise, and that's his third. Well, this is about the time of the game, Mike, where all of these free throws you need to start really tracking them because it, it, it's clear the way this game's going. It, it's going to come down to a possession or two at the end. Both of these teams are just too good. So now all of these free throws just get magnified. You've got to convert them both sides of the floor right here. As you see Quentin Johnson, the 6'6 sophomore from Valley Vista High School, hit the first one and now put the second one. Ooh, rolls around and got to love that home court roll. <laughs> So now they're down just by one as Phoenix 70 to 69. Again, can Pima hold on to the lead with Deion James and Alizé Travis on the bench? A turnover there. Here comes LeVette Parker pushing the ball up the court. 
Drops it back off to Matthews, going to his right. Grisby sets a sliding screen. I guess technically it can't be sliding, or that would have been a foul. Well, that's what Coach Peabody wanted in the first half and didn't get him. Now the three-pointer from Parker, and he buries it. Ravette Parker, his fourth one of this game. Boy, he has been so good tonight. 72-70, Phoenix goes up. Going down low, there is Alunga, puts it up. And in. Is that Isaiah Murphy? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, Phoenix has got a decision to make because they keep trying to keep that backside wing high and on any penetration, the backside right at the rim has been open all night. Tied up at 72, 9.55 left to go in this championship game as Matthews puts up a three, no good, but the long rebound goes to Johnson as he drops it off to his teammate, KV on Morrow, get it back up to Jonathan Matthews. Look at Matthews just slicing to the hoop, keeping his dribble though, gets it to Parker now, back to Matthews for three, and it's good as he dusts off the strings there. Very, very unselfish play and a great extra pass. Tell you what, it's a pleasure to watch these two guards play the game. They do a fantastic job. 75-72 as Matthews gets the foul, that's his first. Checking back in for Pima, number 21, Alizé Travis, and number 15, Dion James. 9.24, both for four fouls. Coach Peabody, you said six minutes, this is two and a half. Yeah, you know, right now, you know, the game flipped around a little bit. You know, it was a three-point lead for Pima just a minute and a half ago. Now it's a three-point lead for PC. So apparently he felt this at the time. I think it's probably a little too early, but we'll see how it goes. Well, if I'm De PC right here, I go right at him. Well, Deion James gets that hoop, though, his first of the second half. So now they're only down by one, 75-74. Guaranteeing he'll be playing some Olay defense, but he gets that rebound right there. He's able to snag it down off the missed layup by Matthews. Now, Alizé Travis gets it over to him. James goes down the lane, gets his own rebound. Yep. And, oh, no foul there. He will get called with the travel. It looks good. like he was trying to put the reverse up and or dish it to his teammate, just didn't know what he wanted to do. Yeah, it was a good call by the official, too, because he definitely did shuffle. But, yeah, I agree with you. That was kind of an indecisive move. That's where you got to be careful, though, if you're uh, James right there. Any dribble penetration, you know PC is going to be looking to take that charge. Well, what do we say? Pina had coming in, you said they have five players averaging over double figures. Yes. Oh, and Coolsby goes for the dunk, loses control, flies off the rim. Oh. And now we are going to get a foul. <laughs> That's on Anastasi. That'll be his third. <laughs> well, Coach Gordon was begging and pleading for them to call that on 15 because <laughs> he was right in that mix. But, you know, I love the play by Goolsby right there. You know that James is going to be hesitant to guard his rim right there with yeah. four fouls. And great job by, by the young man just to go and attack that rim and get rewarded. Yeah, this is the free throw it goes off the knee. And Isaiah Murphy frustrated. And look at this, Coach Peabody all the way at half court wants to know why the horn went off. And again, and I think that's when, right when uh, Isaiah Murphy looked up. I'm not saying it's yep. an excuse, but again, you hear the horn, the buzzer like that. Yeah. He looked up and lost the ball out of bounds. It's not, it's not a correctable error, though. That's the problem. It, it's an unfortunate break, maybe even a home break, but there, it's not a correctable error. You can't overchange that right there. It, they're going to get the explanation, but yeah, there's nothing the officials can do here. Well, he didn't like the explanation, but nonetheless, it stays with PC as Nelms has it. So Nelms, Moore, Goolsby, Goulet back with his fourth foul, number 21, and LeVette Parker, the five on the court for PC. That gets blocked, and it comes down to Alizé Travis, who's on the floor with Deion James, Emilio Aceto. And it's James with the ball there. Sato gets it to him, and he'll draw a foul. Isaiah Murphy and Jacob Anastasi are the five on the court for Pima. 
And that is on the first foul on KV on Moore. So with eight oh. minutes left to go, that'll send James to the free throw line. As he hits the first free throw. Going to be curious to see how Coach Peabody plays this. If Pima gets up by three or five points here in the next 30 seconds to a minute, be curious to see whether he pulls James out and gives him a little break and tries to extend now those minutes a little bit too. Well, he missed the second one, so we are all knotted up at 75. Yes, more with the ball and no shot. Oh. Oh, and that's the fifth on Alizé Travis. He cannot believe it. Wow. And Goolsby went by him, but man, that is that is tough for Alizé Travis. As again, he fouls out with 11 points for this team. This came on more than 6'2 sophomore. From Independence High School will be at the free throw line. Well, and here's something to look for right here. Knowing that their point guard, a guy who has controlled tempo very, very well in this game, has fouled out. Watch Coach Gordon and to see, especially on out of bounds or made free throw situations, now extending that pressure up, trying to take a couple of extra possessions away via turnover. Uh, I was going to say to you, I wouldn't be I was going to ask you, are we going to see that? Wouldn't be surprised to see it either. Yeah, and absolutely. These are the situations as coaches you kind of prepare your team for ahead of time and say, in this event, when a player goes out of his quality, that this is what we're going to do defensively. So just kind of keep your eye on that and see. A lot of it's also going to depend on the score. If he still has a lead right here, he may play it a little bit safe. Well, Moore missed the second free throw as you saw. Pima rushing it back up the court with 10 seconds, 12 seconds left on the shot clock. It's knocked around, no good. Nice run down there. And that was by number 23, Anastasi, but they turn it over. Lavette Parker on the break, and he gets his fifth point of the second half. And Phoenix goes up by three, 78 75. So Isaiah Murphy, who tries to bounce it down low, Ooh, and ricochets over to Asado, but they're going to say he was fouled. Coach Peabody is trying to get a technical right here, I think. He is really giving it to that baseline official. This is where he's got to keep his head for his team because it's still a one possession game right here. No need to pick one up. Yeah, as I say, that we go to the free throw line. Nelms picks up his third. First free throw by Asado on line, rolls around and drops. Gets his team to within one as he buries the second. The 78-77 see score there. Seven minutes left to go in this division, region one, division two championship game here from Phoenix College. So glad you could join us for this awesome game here on MCTV Sports. That shot by Goolsby, no good. Jalunga Moise from Raymond S. Kellis High School gets the rebound there. Now they go down low to James. Oh, and he gets shut down by Goolsby, but he puts it back up and gets knocked right back in to his right hand. Well, how did he get that follow-up shot up? Well, I'll tell you what, he stayed on balance. And for the young players out there that are watching, whenever you play the game of basketball, you've got to do everything on balance. If he is off balance in the slightest, he doesn't have a chance of getting that rebound, misses out on a big two points for Pima right there. And they're back up by one, 79-78. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. The floater up and no good by Plummer. Or I'm sorry, check that, that was Goulet. Now down at the other end, Isaiah Murphy, his eighth point of the second half. And now another, Pima up by three, 81-78. Another six-point swing, yep. Bears crowd starting to get into it a little bit more, which is a little bit quiet, which is not like them in this gym. Yeah, great crowd here tonight, by the way. I know it's tough to see because of where our cameras are, but the whole other side across from us is absolutely jam-packed. O'Reilly Goulet with the uh, three, and the air balls the three. Oh, the rebound gets knocked around. Anastasi puts it up. Coach Gordon doesn't like the call. 
And it is a foul. And that is the fourth on Goolsby. As Peabody's still talking to the coach, Peabody's still talking to the official. Yeah. And he's got to be careful right here because having coach games with this crew, they'll let you go to a certain point. And as soon as you cross that line, they're going to ring one up. So he's got to be careful right here. I know he's displeased. I know sitting here just watching this game that I'd be a little bit displeased. But this is where he's got to understand. Again, it's a one possession game right now. Your team's in it with the chance to go to the national tournament. Sometimes it's better off. You know you've worked them. You've got your point across. Let it go from there. So Anastasi missed the first free throw. And now puts the second one up and in. This is a great timeout by Coach Peabody, by the way. So 82 to 78 is the score. He takes a full timeout. We'll do that with him. 531 left to go in the second half. And the Aztecs leading on the road, like Coach said, for the right to go to Danville, 82 to 78. We offered one of the first automotive technology degrees in the Southwest. To date, we've seen thousands of graduates enter their dream field the automotive industry. Yeah, I guess you can call us dream builders. Let us help you build yours. Because as you can see, we've got more dreamers on the way. Way to go, Mia. Phoenix College for the Region 1 Division 2 Championship. The right to go to Danville, Illinois for the national tournament here on MCTV Sports alongside Will Warsilla, Mike Caratinuto, and Will. 82 to 78, Pima leading. Phoenix really needs a score. And the, but out of the timeout, a turnover. Asado with a heck of a hustle play there. And that was a one player, Coach Gordon, who said, talked to him, was about pregame, said, can't let him get going. And defensively either. And look at that dish there from Isaiah Murphy to Dion James, who throws down the thunder. Yeah, great look. And I know Coach Gordon was upset right there, that last possession. And now the three is up and in by Matthews, his second tray. Yeah, the finish really that needed that. Yeah, he really wanted the high low there instead of that initial entry pass that led to the turnover. But great response back by Matthews knocking it down. Seda thought about a long three. Parker on him, tries to skip it down to James. And it's last touch by Riley Goulet, so the Aztecs will have an 11 left on the shot clock. Really lucky there because that was a bad pass and a bad idea. Lucky that they got a fingertip on it. James goes into the lane, the jump stop comes up short. Oh, but it goes to who else? Isaiah Murphy, the man off the bench, his 10th point of the second half. As the shot is up and no good, James gets the Rebound, pushes it up to Moise, goes down the lane, just rolls it over the front of the rim. And along with Moise with his first hoop of the second half, and now it's a seven point lead for the Aztecs, 88 to 81. Really surprised Coach Gordon isn't taking a timeout right here. He's got a lot of trust in his team, clearly. Oh, and mishandled there by Matthews going down, and finally a whistle for a jump ball, and it'll be Aztecs ball. And Coach Gordon kind of fumbles his try erase marker there. Trying to lobby for Faust. <laughs> Trying to get the hand check call there. Very frustrated, which again. Yeah, well, again, you know, the consistency of what's being called and when it's being called, obviously frustrating both coaches tonight. Right. How big has Isaiah Murphy stepped up? Oh, the block shot there, as I say that, Quentin Johnson. And now here comes Matthews the other way. Gets it back to Nelms, over to Matthews. Now they'll work the ball around. Parker has it up top. Gets it back over to Nelms, and now he'll send it to Goulet. He'll put up the three, and it's good! Riley Goulet with his second tray. And they're within four now, 88-84. Well, we said he was going to be able to get some looks, especially with them keying on Parker, that possession right there. Good knockdown by Riley Goulet right there. So Alizé Travis fouled out as Riley knocks it down. They miss there and down low to Quinton Johnson. No good again. Nice rebound there by Anastasi. 
Nothing in away from Quentin Johnson. Now Asado gets it down low to James. Jump stop. Oh, he gets shut down by Goulet, but they're going to say too much contact. And that'll be Riley Goulet's third foul. Well, I'll tell you what, Quentin Johnson has left a bunch of them on the table here in the second half, right around the rim. And, uh, you know, good substitution here. Plummer's been sitting over there a long, long time. Look for him to get a lot of these shots around the rim right now that have been going to Johnson. Well, Deion James with the hoop there on the free throw, I should say, he gets it. It's his team back up by five, and yeah. He had a stretch back out to Reese Plummer as he checks in for Quentin Johnson. Deion James out of Empire High School here. And he puts the second free throw up and in. So 90 to 84, six point lead, just under three minutes left to go here in the game. Can the Bears come back and down low? Belonga will get the foul. Look at that, right to the hole goes Reese Plummer. That's his fourth. And and foul right. trouble is going to be a problem here. But again, you know, we, we thought this is the way this game could go right down to the wire. Big free throws here. Just off the bench. Again, maybe not too much rhythm. A little short on that free throw for Plummer. Again, we'll see if he can make this second one, get his team to within five. And Reese Plummer does just that. 90 to 85, 255 left to go. Little surprise they're not extending pressure up a little bit higher, oh. but effective. Oh, and Anastasi throws it over the head of Isaiah Murphy. I was about to say to you, as much as we've seen Murphy handle the ball past half court, are you surprised he's not bringing it up the court? Yeah, a little surprised right there too, because it was the right time to throw that trap there to see if you could gain the extra possession. Matthews for three, and he buries it. Jonathan Matthews, three buckets in the second half, all from behind the arc. And now they are within two, 90 to 88. As we get a full time out from Coach Gordon, you see Jordan Matthews there. Phoenix College making a run. We're going to step aside to come back for the final 243 here from the Region 1 Division II Championship. Our family is no less than any other family. My heart, My heart does a sea race. race. Even if I love, love is love. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Phoenix College trying to make a run here at home. The Bears dead the number one seed. 90 to 88, Pima leads. I'm Michael Caratino, Will Warasilla. Well, we thought we'd see a full court press, Will. Yep. And uh, it looks like we are going to see that from the Bears now. Absolutely. Like I said, you turned them over the last time. They're really going to focus here and extend it up. Good idea for Pima. Keep it off of the sidelines. Work it side to side. Get it middle and then settle into a possession. Oh, and kicking violation there by Matthews. Hit that just hit that big three. Again, not starting tonight. Didn't start in the second half. But it'll, a little butting heads with Coach Gordon, but the mutual respect there. Matthews understands, got back, got back on the court, and has played well, gets beat there. Anastasi with the jumper inside the free throw line, and Jacob banks it in. Big possession right there. Nice shot and rhythm. Good possession by Pima. Oh, Matthews turns it over as Keon James runs it down. It's to Asado now back to Anastasi. Gets it over to Moise, and they're up by four. Deion James down low, no good. Nice pressure there, and a solid rebound by Goulet. Gets it up to Matthews. The bounce at the Parker, not bashful to take the three, rolls off the rim, no good. Goulet tries to run it down, and well, they send it towards you. They wanted you to get in the game. Hey, if I caught it, I was pulling it. <laughs> Guys, Rashad Goosby will check back in for Reese Plummer. A little offense for defense here, I guess. 
Uh, that kind of confused by that substitution. Maybe it's for free throw shooting, though, because Plummer has had his struggles at the line tonight. Maybe that's what Coach Gordon thinking right here. Matthews holds his dribble. Oh, the three gets blocked. But Goolsby gets it now. Nelms wide open, three goes long. And tipping that was Goolsby as the ball's on the court, picked up by Asado. And he calls timeout. A timeout. Asado yep. calls a quick timeout as Coach Gordon looking for a foul call down low, not getting there. Well, Pima will take a full timeout with 135 left to go. We'll do it with them. 92 88. Pima leading over Phoenix. the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. 135 left to go in this Region 1 Division 2 championship game. The right to go to the national tournament in Danville, Illinois. Pima leading over Phoenix, 92-88. to If you're just joining us, well, Shame on you, you missed a heck of a game so far, but the Aztecs getting the navy blue uniforms, the white trim and white numbers, Phoenix in there, all grays with the blue and gold trim. There's a pressure there, but Isaiah Murphy able to get the ball across court. Anastasi has it, goes down the lane, and it's taken away by Nelms. Matthews releases, goes up for the layup, but misses it, changing the shot there. Aceto, what a heck of a hustle play by Aceto. But all Matthews needed to do there, coach was gather himself with a little yep. ball fake, have him fly by and get the layup. Yep. Asado for three, and he buries it. Wow. Emilio Asado with the tray. I was just getting ready to say they need to pull it out and use some clock, but boy, oh boy, what an ice cold shot. And then LaVette Parker answers with a three from the top of the key, but they're still down by four. Now they have to play the foul game. 51.1 seconds left to go. And wow. Coach Gordon sitting down, but a, look at that. A big three by Asado under pressure. And if and if Matthews doesn't miss that layup, now it's just a two-point game. And, you, you know, you don't want to talk about it at this stage, but this is a shame that one of these, two, you know, one of these teams is not going to be playing in Danville because both of them, tell you what, are very, very deserving of going. So Murphy at the free throw line. Hits it. It's at 96 91. And the second free throw, no good. Uh, so getting the rebound is a delay. So a five point game with 45 seconds left. A three, and it's up and in by Jonathan Matthews. All four of his buckets from behind the arc. And now they're only down by two with 40 seconds yep. left to go. They don't have to foul. They yep. just need to stop. Yep. Oh. oh, and the foul there by Goolsby. And Coach says, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. But well, that's Goolsby's fifth, though. Yeah, but with the 13-second differential there, you that was a smart foul to take. So you don't want to do it in the backcourt. That was the correct decision. Okay. Let's see if you can pressure him back here. But once they got it into the front court, you had to take that foul. And with Goolsby fouling out, not that big of a deal right now because you're still, if you're Matt Gordon in Phoenix, you're going to spread the floor every offensive possession here anyways. Right. Moga right. Moise again, a freshman out of Raymond S. Kellis High School here in Phoenix, right next to the University of Phoenix Stadium. He'll go to the free throw line, and Moise puts it up and in. Well, this will make it a two possession game if he can hit it. Yeah, but I think um, Pima's going to take a timeout on the make. And he misses it, but it gets tipped out. And they're running it down, and Pima gets it. And we have a. And that's on Avante Nelms, and that's his fourth. Nelms now picks up his fourth, and it's a three-point lead. 
And that'll send Anastasi, who's had a little bit of a struggles from the line tonight. Yeah, it's been one area that both teams, um, when you get to that national tournament, whichever one of these teams gets there, they're going to have to do a better job at the foul line, especially the way they play the game. Free throws are very, very important to both these clubs. 30.6 seconds left. Jacob Anastasi misses the first. Let's see if he makes the second. And rattles that one home. Coach Peabody takes a timeout. So a 98-94, 30 seconds left to go. Now here's something to look for, and I know in these situations, I would always extend up a little bit of just nice soft pressure, try to use some clock right here. So watch that coming out of the timeout. Well, again, and it's something you want to put pressure on, but look how fast they come down. LaFette Parker hits that three. Matthews hits a three. Again, 30 seconds though, Will. I mean, you, I know they're, they are a three-point shooting team, but you don't need it. You get down court quick. They're defending three-point line. Get a layup. I agree, and especially because Pima has been suspect from the foul line, you know at this point that Coach Gordon is saying, okay, look, we're going to dribble drive everything just exactly like they always do. You're going to have the option for pitch outs, but I agree with you 100%. You're probably going to be able to get something right at the rim. Take that, take it early, and then extend your pressure in the backboard. If you don't turn them over, take your foul, put them at the foul line, make Pima prove it from the strike. Yeah, and definitely take it right at Deion James. He's not going to want to foul, pick up his fifth, even though it's 30 seconds left. The board will go to overtime. It does go to overtime. Rashad Goolsby is out, and so for Phoenix, as is Alizé Travis for Pima. So again, very tough there as Matthews lets it roll. And look at that, goes right by Anastasi. Nelms will take the three. Oh, out the back of the rim, and who else getting the rebound right there? Isaiah Murphy, and he gets fouled. An open look for Nelms. But man, I started talking about Isaiah Murphy, what he's done in the second half. 11 points and a huge rebound right there. Yeah, he has definitely been an X factor for him. And you know, anytime in championship games, you know what your star players are gonna do. That's the reason they're stars. The variable is always the secondary and bench players to find out what they give you and tonight, Murphy has been fantastic for him. Well, he misses that free throw. <laughs> so still keeping Phoenix College hanging around with 21.6 left. As Isaiah Murphy puts it up. Oh, and no good, misses both. And it's run down in the corner by Phoenix College. As they're coming across half court, Matthews goes down the lane. Oh, and up and in there, and the timeout taken right away. Plummer gets the hoop. So that makes it a two-point game, 98 to 96. And again, the PC coach is looking for contact on that. The way it was called earlier in the game, that definitely would have been a foul. Wasn't in this situation. So let's see what uh, Pima comes out with. You know that Phoenix is going to be extending the pressure up. Who do you trust if you're Coach Peabody right now? That's what he's drawing up. Who does he trust at the foul line? with the ball right now with 12.4 left. Well, they, get, they gotta get an inbound zone. Let's reset 98-96. And again, you look at uh, the referees right there again. Some ticky tag, but it's been pretty much consistent on both ends. Both coaches, of course, always going crazy. But you look <laughs> at it, 98-96, 12.4 seconds left. They gotta get pressure first, try and get a turnover, which they can do. Again, not having Alizé Travis in the game, I know I sound like a broken record coach, but the point guard, again, Played well, had 11 points, but again, just the tempo he set, made sure everybody was fine. And now he's off. He's obviously fouled out, but to get this ball in, you're saying, who's he feel coming with the free throw line? They still have to inbound. Well, and if you're Matt Gordon, flip that around. You're over there right now saying, we want a certain individual to catch the ball because he struggled from the line. So we're going to face guard deny and even double, not guard the inbounder to try to let that guy catch and foul him immediately. Trying to steal the ball there, and Matthews picks up his third foul. Trying to save Nelms from his fifth, which he does. And that will send Dion James to the free throw line, who 
has only missed one so far. He's nine for 10 from the line is James as the crowd gets loud and he sinks it. And that's a mark of a great player too, a guy that wants the ball at the end of the game, get it to me, trust me, I'll go to the line, I'll knock him stiff. Oh, and that one rolls in. And that make, gets them all to the century mark. They average 100 points a game. They're at 100 right now. 100 to yep. 96 is the score. Piedmont takes a full time out the last one. We'll take it with them. Phoenix down by four with 9.8 seconds left to go. Come back for this exciting finale here on MCTV Sports. My name is William Parker and I'm six years old and I want to be a fireman. Back here at Phoenix College, 100 to 96 to score. Pima leading for the right to go to Danville in the national tournament for the Aztecs who haven't been in this championship game. Like Will and I talked about pregame in seven years. Here we go. Final eight seconds as we come up the court, the three. Oh, what a shot by Jonathan Matthews. Five three-pointers in the second half, 15 points. And they are within one with 4.4 left to go. And we get a timeout right away. Wow. Officials stop the clock to make sure it's right. So 4.9, <laughs> so they put five tenths of a second back on the clock, Will. And yeah. all Phoenix has to do now is just foul on the inbounds right away, just foul. Yep. Yeah, Matt's gonna take a timeout right here. Yeah. Yep, this is a smart one. Yep. He had one so, left. Go ahead, yeah, yep. he had one left and he took it right there. Yeah, because what you don't want to do right here is have any communication breakdowns, okay? So with 4.9 to go, the instruction is going to be very, very simple right here about face guard and foul, and he's already going to have the last second play set up. So what's going to be interesting for Coach Peabody is that on the make, it's going to be interesting to see how he chooses to defend this and whether if it's a two or a three-point game, what he does. And if you're Phoenix College, though, too, right away, Will, you got a foul right away. Oh, 4 yeah. 4.9 overstate the obvious, but... Yep. If he gets it inbounds, but again, they could get a turnover, they could get a hoop. This game has been insane. <laughs> Jonathan Matthews, 15 points in the second half, and I want to say unofficially leading all scores in the second half, all from behind the arc. He had eight at the half, he has yep. 23 right now. We talked about him for a reason, and that's why. Look at that shot. He even had a defender on him, and he gets in rhythm on the yep. dribble and buries it. Yep, and, you know, again, he hit that same shot a couple of possessions ago, so he had the confidence to knock it down. What? Yeah, there you go. Okay, horn, whistles, <laughs> now, okay, there we go, now we can inbound. That's Lunga, and they foul right away, Asado, 3.7, but even if he makes both, it's still only a three-point game, but unfortunately, 3.7 seconds left. Well, and you saw from what Matthews did before that, you know, he's a guy that flat out can get it down the floor in a few seconds, and if he has any separation, he can pull it, so. Well, Asado will go to the line. Riley Goulet, that he just picked up his fifth, he fouls yes. out, and that'll send Davis Wade into the game. He played a little bit in the first half, but now Asado trying to see if he can give his team a three-point lead. The six-foot-four sophomore from South Point Catholic down in Tucson, the first one up, rolls around and is good. 
Well, unofficially, PC has made 10 three-point baskets this second half. So right now, if I'm Pima, I do not let Matthews get anywhere near this basketball. Shot is up and good. So it's three points. Here comes Matthews. He puts it up. It's on line. Oh! And the Aztecs are going to go to Danville. 102 to 99 is the final. And wow, Phoenix College just absolutely shocked their home crowd. I know they've been 13 years in a row. They might not go every year as Avante Nelms coming through first. And Davis walking off the court. Coach Gordon not happy with him at all. Tell him to get back in line and shake hands. As quite a few Phoenix College players pretty upset about how that ended. As Coach Gordon gathering his troops, getting them back in. LeVette Parker, again, congratulations to Coach Peabody. Wow, what an ending to a game. Well, it, everything is advertised. You know, talking about it, you know, in the lead-in that the two best teams were playing. It was going to be high scoring. It was going to be a lot of three-point baskets. The Stars were going to do what we expected them to do. But you know what? It's always those secondary guys. And tonight, uh, you know, it was Murphy. But I'll tell you what, my money, the player of the game is Asado for Pena. He was absolutely fantastic. Big shots, and especially when James went out. That's when they needed possessions. That's when they needed to get points, and he gave them to them. Well, we're going to step aside. When we get back, we'll have the trophy presentation coming up here for Pima, and we'll talk to Coach Peabody and one of the winning players from Pima that are headed to Danville, all coming up here on MCTV Sports. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Always. Lock it up. Back here at Phoenix College, as you see the Bears getting their runner-up trophy again. I know, it, like you said, it's certain somebody's got to lose. They had a phenomenal season, nothing to hang your heads about. A 25-win season, they finished 25-7. and seven. Yep. And, uh, again, I know Coach Gordon will be uh, knocking away at it uh, very soon. Yep. Well, first of all, before we talk about that, want to give props to the gentleman standing at half court. That is Art Becker, who, besides being the former president of the NJCAA, being a Hall of Fame member of ASU men's basketball, the Pac-12, Scottsdale Community College, and the NJCAA. He's in all those Hall of Fame. He also uh, was an assistant coach when I was at Scottsdale, and I had the unbelievable pleasure of having to work with him and getting to know him and having a friendship to this day. And let me tell you something. He has forgotten more basketball than I will ever know. So these young men right here probably have no idea the living legend that they're getting to shake hands with right now. Eh, they might have a little bit of an idea. I hope so. I, because you know, he's a Sun Devil. I always got love for Art, so we're yeah. good like that. We are good like that. As they see the, again, players getting their, uh, their medals. Yeah, happy for Coach Peabody. You know, I'll tell you what, it is a tough, tough task to come on the road at a place where Phoenix has had so much success and had such a great season and lose your point guard and still come out on the top end of this. Well-deserved, and I'm looking forward to see what type of run this team can make back in Danville. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. Again, they don't get in foul trouble. And like you said, I know it's a game-to-game -game thing, but got to sure up those free throws. Again, a 39% is about 40% three-point shooting team. And Deion James gets the uh, most valuable player. Again, playing with four fouls for quite a bit of time. Made some big hoops when they needed them to. Yep. 
Young man had a fantastic basketball game tonight. 27 points for Deion James. Yep. Him and DeSato both had fantastic games and really were everything is advertised. As Coach Peabody now gets the uh, Region 1 Division 2 trophy from Coach Becker. <laughs> As again, that's a very happy team headed to Danville, Illinois. Congratulations to Peabody. Like I said, we'll step aside. We're going to catch up with Coach Peabody and the MVP, Dion James, after this here on MC TV Sports. Back here at Phoenix College, the Region 1 Division 2 champs, the Pima Aztecs. Deion James, the most valuable player, joining me. Congratulations. Thank you. When you hear that, Region 1 Division 2 champs, how does that sound? It just sounds great. It was a goal of ours since the beginning, and we've been striving for that since the beginning, and we worked hard, and, and we finally got it. It's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Now, Phoenix College, 13 years in a row in this. You lost to them twice in the regular season. You know the cliche, Dion. It's tough to beat a team three times. You guys are going back and forth. I mean, it is a cliche, like a heavyweight fight. Two, two heavyweights in the middle of the ring just punching. You, had a, you, got, you got in foul trouble. Your point guard fouls out. What are you thinking as that's happening with so much time left in the game? I'm thinking we've done this in practice. We, we practice on scenarios in the game, and, and we know we got each other's back at the end of the day. So if we play hard, we're going we're gonna to end up winning, and I knew that. So those last few minutes, it comes down to free throws, you guys. A little bit shaky, but what's Coach Peabody saying to you in timeouts to just keep to keep you guys calm and focused? Because we you saw the, the power they had from behind the arc. Yeah. He just said pretty much keep your composure, make sure you don't shoot any threes and, and knock down free throws. So you're headed to Danville. I know I know it's one game at a time. Coach is gonna sell you, but can you guys bring home the hardware? Can you bring home a national title? I think we got a chance to do it. I really think we do. Well I'll let you celebrate with your teammates. Congratulations and good luck at the national tournament. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll be back. We'll have Coach Peabody. As Dion takes off, off Coach Peabody from Pima coming up after this. When they test you, stand firm and move only when you hear the seatbelt click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Back here at Phoenix College where the Pima Aztecs win the Region 1 Division 2 championship. 102 to 99, Coach Brian Peabody joining me. Coach, obviously, congratulations. I kidded around before the game. I always say it, it's the Phoenix College Invitational. 13 straight years they've been here. They haven't won it every year, but still. You lost to them twice. The first half, you guys just throwing punches back and forth. What would you say to your team at halftime to kind of keep them calm and reel them back in? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Matt Gordon. He does an unbelievable job. You know, he's the guy in the league that everybody try, you know, strives to be. So congratulations to Matt and the Phoenix Bears. Someone had to, you know, someone had to win, someone had to lose, unfortunately. But, you know, I'm really proud of my team. We were up two at half. They came, made a big run. We made a run, run back. We just kind of kept our composure the whole game. You know, I've got, I start five sophomores, and that's, I think that's big. Two of them are three-year guys that have been with me for three years. So I think having five sophomores on the on the floor, I was a little I was a little uh, nervous when our point guard fouled out because my starting point guard broke his foot, as I was telling you. Backup point guard uh, fouls out, and Jake Anastasia did an unbelievable job filling in at the one, especially down the stretch when they're fouling and you got to get the ball up the floor and pressing. So that was a tough situation to put him in. Yeah, I mean, Alize fouls out. Obviously, Dion has four fouls. I know you want you want to keep him on the bench for a little bit, but maybe, and you know, it's easy for me to coach from a call in a game, but you brought him back kind of quick. They both had the four fouls. I know Alize fouls out. What out. would you say to Dion, though, to just kind of say, to keep his competitive nature, but to maybe back off and not pick up that fifth foul? Well, we took them both out, and then they went on a run. 
And I was like, I'm, I'm losing, you know, with my best guys on the floor. I don't care if they foul or not. I'm not going to have, you know, take a loss when they're sitting on the bench. So I put him back in. Obviously, AT fouled out. And then Dion did a great job just gapping his guys and staying on his feet. You know, our whole goal, we don't have any shot blockers. And so, you know, our philosophy is just gap guys, stay on your feet, and make them make tough, you know, tough twos. They, you know, they shoot the crap out of the three. They're unbelievable. We're just trying to run them off the three-point line and make them make tough twos all night. Obviously, we did a great job defensively. Held, I, I told our guys that have to first team to 100 wins. I was pretty close. Absolutely. And I, I know it's one game at a time, and you're, you're happy. You want to enjoy this. But can this team does have the makeup to where you could bring home a national title? You know what, I haven't even thought about it, but, you know, I hope so. You know, we'll talk about it and start, you know, you know, watching game films and all that kind of stuff. We'll do our job. But, you know, Matt won a couple, you know, national title two or three years ago. So anything's possible. Well, we'll let you enjoy the ride back. Congratulations Appreciate again it. on the victory. We're going to step aside, and then Will and I will wrap it up as the Aztecs win 102-99 to over Phoenix College. We were one of the first colleges in the Southwest to offer evening and weekend classes in small business management because we understand it can be hard pursuing that dream business idea during regular business hours. Let us help you get started with yours. Because at Glendale Community College, we believe it's never too late. So as you can see, our sales are improving, but we can do better. Or too early to pursue your dreams. Back here at Phoenix College to wrap up this night. What an unbelievable game, 102 to 99. The Pima Aztecs win the Region 1 Division 2 Championship. And Will, you said it'd be back and forth. I know people say, oh, whoever has the ball last. Coach Peabody telling me who, the first team to 100 wins, they get their first 102 to 99. What a phenomenal victory for the Aztecs. Yep, everything we expected coming into this game. The stars performed as we talked about on the broadcast but it was kind of the fringe players. And Murphy's the kid that I point to. As you said on the broadcast, you needed somebody else, if you were Pima, to go with those two. And boy, he delivered, had himself a heck of a game. But Aceto, he gets 10 over his average. So all the way around, just a well-played game. A shame that one of them had to lose. And this is where I wish the tournament forecast would kind of take into account the at-large bids because Phoenix is the ninth ranked team in the country as of right now. They lose, they don't go, Pima gets in. But I'll tell you, it's gonna be interesting to see the run they make, because they are a balanced team that could go into that tournament and really make some noise. Yeah, even in foul trouble too, and we talked about 51-49 at the end of the first half, Pima's up. But again, you knew Phoenix would make a run, they did. And Coach Peabody just made a statement there. You would have left him on the bench till about six minutes. He said both those guys between, um, both those guys getting into foul trouble was very tough. And he's like, if I'm going to go down, I'm going down with my best on the court. And he brought him back early. One fouled out. Obviously, the other didn't, and it paid off. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we talked about in the broadcast. When the point guard went out, I thought, boy, Phoenix can really go on a run. But they didn't take advantage of it. I expected them to extend pressure up a little bit, maybe make the guards uncomfortable, make them initiate offense a little bit further away from the hoop. That didn't happen. Pima took advantage of it, but don't lose sight of this. When it counted, they stepped up to the foul line. They made their free throws. So deserving win, an outstanding win for Coach Peabody and the program, and now I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in Danville. Yeah, exactly. They cleaned up just enough free throws at the end to do it, struggled a little bit. But that being said, again, a great victory for Pima. Again, hats off to Matt Gordon and Phoenix College. Again, another year in the Region 1 Division 2 Championship. And I'm with you because an at-large bid, the, yeah, the 11th ranked team in the nation doesn't get to go to the national tournament after a heck of a game like this. So again, not being a homer, but you're right. It is very tough, but to not take anything away from Pima. You said it to me earlier today, beating a team three times, very tough to do. And Pima just had enough in the tank, make the adjustments and did it. Yep, absolutely. So, um, you know, looking at this now, what Pima needs to do. Okay, so let's touch on this for a little bit. Where they were deficient in parts of the game tonight, they've got to do a good job rebounding the ball because they gave extra possessions when they didn't need to. So hopefully Coach Peabody and the crew cleans that up. They got to clean up the foul line, make sure they're knocking down free throws. I felt turnovers were okay considering the pace of play. 
I didn't think those were excessive, so I think they'll be okay there. But just best of luck to them in the tournament. Hopefully they clean up those areas and they can bring home a trophy to represent Arizona. It'd be great. Well, with an MVP of the, tur of the tournament like Dion James, no surprise, they have a great shot. Well, we're going to get out of here. Before we do, I want to thank Will Warasilla, our entire crew behind the camera, making sure that this game came to you. But again, Pima becomes the Region 1 Division 2 champs. They beat Phoenix College 102 to 99 to head to, to Danville, Illinois. Good night from Phoenix College.